Mike Briggs is our market analyst this week. On June 22nd, the USDA released the latest cattle on feed report. According to the report, cattle on feed in the United States totaled 11.6 million head on June 1st. That's 4% higher than last year at this time and is the highest June 1st inventory since the series began in 1996. Placements on feedlots during May totaled 2.1 million head, slightly above 2017, and marketing of fed cattle during May totaled 2 million head, 5% above last year's total. Feeder cattle prices were a bit lower this week. However, the dropping corn prices are providing support. We talked with Mike Tuesday morning about the latest supply and demand levels and the increase in inventory, but began by asking him for his assessment of the latest cattle on feed report. They were expecting a bullish report. Not only did they not get that, they got kind of a bearish report. So they really pounded the market yesterday and, and today they're trying to hover, but I don't know how, I think the ice under the market's a little thin. I think it might go again. What's the bottom line here? We've got too many cattle. This has been advertised for months and months and months. And I, I believe I said on the last show, I never liked the market after Memorial Day because your beef demand starts to go down. We're gonna have 4th of July next week and then you're in the dog days of summer and we've got too many cattle and I think we're really gonna struggle. And that's just our market. And then you've got all the stuff going on in Washington DC and around the world. It really is gonna make it tough, I think. Let's talk about that briefly. Um, what do you tell people when they ask you about what's happening with the trade situation. The demand still seems high for China at this point and in some other areas. The demand is good. China, China's insignificant at this point. I hope at some point, I believe our president's playing a big game of bluff, bluffer, liars poker, whatever. And I think he's gonna get his way at some point. I think we're gonna have some short-term pain for some long-term gain. But I hope when he gets, done, gets it done as far as China, I hope that we have some better trade agreement there than what we have now because what we have now is a joke as far as I'm concerned. Um, the amount of cattle that will qualify for what they want to do is very small. I'd like to see it be a little bit bigger. But yes, exports as a whole are doing great and I don't really see that to change but yet you always want to increase that especially when you have the supply of beef that we have in front of us right now and you also have a huge supply of pork and pork is cheaper than beef right now and I that's those features are really going to get to us here pretty quick, I'm afraid. Let's talk a little bit about demand, both from uh, an export status and from a consumer perspective. Well, beef prices are lower than they were last year. So from, some, from a value standpoint, the consumer's got a pretty good value there that he can get after. Exports have been tremendous. I, I assume they're going to continue as such unless the dollar would get out of hand, but I don't think that's going to be the case. You know, there's a lot of trade concerns and things like that going on. I hope our president's playing a big game of liar's poker here and he gets what concessions he wants and that will make exports even go better and we could use that right now because we have such a tremendous supply of fat cattle here for the next month to six weeks and depending upon how we as cattlemen manage that supply that's going to have an effect on the price going forward. What do you tell people when they ask you what should I do because a lot of people are waiting. Uh, don't wait unless you know I'm, ta I'm talking about cattle that you have to go in the next month to six weeks. I really think we're in a lot of trouble here. I think they're going to grind this down on us. You've seen a drop in corn prices, so that gives the, guy gives the guys incentive to put on more pounds, get these cattle bigger, which ultimately means more pounds of meat on that market whenever they come to market. I just think this is what's been advertised, the big cattle tsunami. This has been getting advertised for six months and, and we're in it right now. So I think it's, we're gonna struggle here for a little bit. If we talk about placement, you're doing well? We are, we picked up some customers. I bought some cattle, whether it be right or wrong, uh, earlier this year for delivery at this time period because we always struggle with capacity management this time of year. So we're pretty full. Um, and you kind of saw that in the cattle on feed. You saw a bigger placement number than what was expected and you saw a bigger on feed number than what was expected. The interesting thing there, if you looked at the weight breakdowns, our placements weren't really big cattle. They were a lot of five and six weight cattle. Well, those cattle are first quarter of next year cattle. So that's not something that I don't think will affect the market, but it was just the fact that there was more placements and you saw a bigger cattle on feed. So there's, there's plenty of cattle out there. You mentioned prices, they're probably not quite where you'd like them to be right now? No, no, we're definitely in the red ink in, in cattle right now. And some of these cattle are still, well, most of these cattle are still cattle that went through the winter 
And so the performance isn't what you wanted it to be, so your break-evens aren't what they wanted it to be, and the market's not very good shape, so if you didn't have some price protection on, it hurts pretty bad right now. Are we still seeing some disparity with the Packers making more money? You are gonna continue to see that disparity because they've got a supply, and you know, years ago, when, you know, several years ago, five, six, seven, eight years ago, when they started closing packing plants because of the extended drought and the, the reduction of the cattle supply, well, that's coming home to roost right now because there's not enough hook space to process as many cattle that are out there. You know, we're, we're probably down almost 100,000 head of slaughter capacity from where we used to be. Now, we don't need all of that, but we certainly could use a little more than what we have so the Packers had to compete a little better, then maybe they wouldn't be getting such a big margin. Are we still seeing uh, a little help from lower corn prices? Yeah, but that, there's also that also, like I said earlier, that'll add a little temptation to people to make the animals bigger and then consequently put more pounds on the market that maybe the market really doesn't need right now. But right now, the weather has been really good. Now we're coming into a critical time of year. I would like to think the corn's kind of forging a low here because your rains are gonna become less frequent as we go through the summer and maybe see a little bit higher corn price from here, but I don't know that it's gonna be anything that gets real out of hand. It, that depends on mother nature. We have some warmer weather coming, heat stress a problem. You know, it can be. Now we've been really fortunate this year. We haven't had any of those days where it's really hot and still. Every day that's been really hot, we've had excellent wind. So we haven't had a lot of heat stress here. But once again, when it gets hot in the summer, the wind doesn't blow. So it can really be a, it can really be a challenge. Give us your prediction for the next few months. <laughs> I think we're gonna struggle here for a little bit. I, I don't see anything good till we get in November. I really don't. I think we're really gonna struggle July and August. but. Maybe we'll get a for maybe we'll forge a low this month and start working it higher, but right now I'm not I'm not liking the market very much.